Hollywood. Hello and welcome to the first installment of my Raspberry Pi robot series. As you are seeing, this is what you'll be able to make your robot do by the end of this tutorial. Wireless motor control, so that we can drive it around. More of that later. Our goals today are to comprehend how a Python program controls the movement of a robot, and more importantly, to actually get a robot to move wirelessly. Here's what you're going to need in this tutorial. For those of you who watched the first introductory video, you'll know that we're going to be using the Pi2Go Lite from Fortronics as a basic robotics kit, so you're going to need one of those. If you don't have one, and for more information, you can find links to both Fortronics' website and my previous video in the description below. As excellent build instructions are already available, I'm not going to be covering the building of the Pi2Go, so make sure that you have yours in this state, ready for action and soldered up. Next, you will of course need a Raspberry Pi to control your robot. The Pi2Go Lite is compatible with all Raspberry Pis, including the older Model B and A, as well as the shiny new Model B Plus and A Plus. Throughout this series, I shall be using the B Plus, though you might want to use an A Plus, for example, as they require less power. Also, make sure you have the appropriate SD card for your model with a Raspbian installed. Most robots don't come shipped with batteries, and sadly, the Pi2Go Lite doesn't either. You're going to require six AA batteries, and they will take care of powering both the Pi and the entire robot, including all the motors and sensors. You could use normal AA batteries and replace them when they get worn out, but the chances are you'll probably be using your robot a lot, and that means you're going to burn through a lot of batteries. In the long run, it makes much more sense to use rechargeable ones and to buy yourself some if you don't have any at the moment. There are lots of brands available, but I recommend Panasonic AnyLoops. A link to Amazon is in the description. As we want to control our robot wirelessly, we will need a USB Wi-Fi dongle, as the Raspberry Pi doesn't have Wi-Fi on board. I'm using this one from the Pi Hut. I'll include links to both this model and a list of known working USB Wi-Fi dongles in the description below. Optionally, you could buy a Wi-Fi dongle with your pi to go as part of a bundle. We need a Wi-Fi dongle, as this will allow us to remotely access the Pi from another computer. Therefore, you are also going to need access to your Wi-Fi network and another computer to remotely access your Pi with. I'm going to be using a desktop running Windows 8, but the steps in this tutorial are essentially the same for Mac and Linux users. For those who cannot use a Wi-Fi network or another computer, you could do this all locally on your Pi and then use a wired keyboard to control the robot, or possibly a Bluetooth one. Finally, you're going to need the usual peripherals for your Raspberry Pi, a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. We only need these to set up our Wi-Fi connection and to find out our Pi's IP address, and that's it. Now let's move on to setting up our robot for wireless activities and installing all the necessary software. First things first, make sure you have your Pi to go set up accordingly. Ensure your Raspberry Pi is screwed in place with the GPIO pins connected to the robot. Make sure you have your SD card in place and ready, as well as all of your batteries in the holder. Now plug in your keyboard, mouse and monitor and boot your Pi up by flicking this switch here. You should see it flicker to life like so. Then log in and boot to the desktop with the command start x. So we want to connect our Raspberry Pi to Wi-Fi so that we can control it wirelessly. Robots are no fun when they're tethered down with wires. In the olden days, Wi-Fi configuration on the Pi used to be quite hard. Luckily, nowadays there is a really easy to use utility built into Raspbian called Wi-Fi Config. We're going to be using that. So make sure your Wi-Fi dongle is plugged in and double click this icon here. You should see a box like this appear. Now click scan and you'll see that a list of your nearby networks will appear. If you're having trouble, make sure that your Wi-Fi dongle is a supported model. Now click on your network and a new box will pop up asking you for your passcode amongst other things. Enter it and click add. If you've got your password correct, you'll see that everything is now connected and after a few moments, it will display your IP address here. Make a note of that for later. It is what we will use to connect to our Pi from a different computer. Now you can unplug your monitor, unplug your keyboard and mouse also, so you just have your robot on its own with the Wi-Fi dongle happily working away. Keep that IP address in your head too. Now let's move to another computer. Make sure it's on the same network as your Pi. As I've said before, I'm using a Windows 8 desktop. So we are all now on a different nearby computer and what we need to do is download an SSH client. 
SSH stands for Secure Shell, and it's just a way of securely communicating between two devices in a terminal environment. So that means that we're only going to be able to type commands, not use a graphical interface like we just did. But that isn't going to be important. I'm going to be covering this on Windows, and it should work for every version of Windows, but if you have a Mac or Linux, it's actually easier, and there are plenty of guides on the internet as to how to SSH into things. Moving swiftly on, we're going to need to download a program called PuTTY. This will be our SSH client, and it can be downloaded at this link, which you're currently seeing on your screens, and I'll include it in the description. Once you're there, click putty.exe down here, and you should see an executable file download, like so. It's quite small and doesn't require any installation, and once we've done that, simply launch it, and you should see a box like this appear. So this box is the PuTTY configuration page, and it may look a bit daunting at first, but don't worry because it isn't too complicated. We don't need to concern ourselves with anything in this category section. All we need to do is enter our IP address from earlier here, make sure that SSH is selected, and then simply click Open. Your port number should be 22 unless you know otherwise. So for me, I'm going to type my IP address in here. And then I'm simply going to click Open. You'll see a black terminal box pop up like this. If you get a message asking you whether or not you want to trust the source, then make sure to click Yes. Congratulations, you're now remotely accessing your Pi. Log in with your usual credentials, so I'm just using the default Pi user. So Pi and Raspberry. And you'll notice that you're in a very similar terminal interface to the stuff you have already seen before. Let's get down to business and install the software that we will need. Fortunately, we only need two things for this to work. Number one will be the code for the robot. I've refined it all and stored it in a GitHub repository for us all to use. Let's download that with the command git space clone space https forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash the hyphen raspberry hyphen pi hyphen guy forward slash robot and then hit enter. You should see the code download like so. We will take a look at that in a minute. Now we need to download a few tools that Python, the programming language, will use. Most likely we will not use these directly, but it means that the Py2Go libraries will function as they should. It's a Python package called smbus, and it can be downloaded with the command sudo apt-get install python hyphen smbus and then hit enter. Let that install and then we're ready to go. If it prompts you at any point whether you'd like to continue simply hit Y and then enter. Now that is finished we can get on and actually look at our code. So if we list the contents of the folder that we are in right now with the command ls you'll see a new directory called robot. Let's change into that with the command cd robot. If we list the contents again, you'll see another directory called Py2Go, as well as a readme file. We're going to need to change into the Py2Go directory, and we can do that with the command cd Py2Go. If we list the contents of this directory, you'll see the program that we're going to be using today, motor.py, here. You'll also see the Py2Go library, py2go.py, which has all of the code for all of the different features. The extra tools folder and init.py are just part of a package that the library uses. We don't have to worry about any of that as the only thing we are really interested in is motor.py. Before we run it, let's make sure we understand it. So I'm just going to open it in the text editor nano with the command nano motor.py. In order to understand a program, we first need to get a grasp as to what it does. We want to be able to control the movement of our robot, so that means the direction in which it is travelling. We also want to be able to control its speed. And finally, we want to do that by pressing keys on our keyboard. Bearing that in mind, let's go through this program. So you'll see I've added quite a few comments to help you on your way. The first bits import Py2Go time. That just imports the libraries that we'll be using. The following lines of code are the most daunting part of the program. These capture key presses, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about how these particular lines of code work. It isn't important to how the actual program functions. Now this is the important bit. 
If we scroll down a bit, you'll see the main body of code. First off, we initialize the Pi to Go, essentially turn it on. Then we open up a while loop here that will just loop round and round until there is a keyboard interrupt and you tell the program to stop. This bit of code here, this bit, detects what key you've pressed on your keyboard and then tells the Pi to Go to go in that direction. For example, if you've pressed up on your keyboard or W if you're using the WSD keys, then the robot will move forwards. Exactly the same applies for left in all the other directions. This next chunk here deals with the speed of the robot. So 0 equates to 0% of the motor's power, and 100 equates to 100% worth of power. It starts at 30% and is changed whenever you press the greater than or less than keys. Finally, this last bit makes the robot stop if the spacebar is pressed. And the accept clause down here makes sure the Pi to Go cleans up properly when we stop the program with Control C. So that is the Python program explained. Feel free to go in and have a tinker and play around with different settings. Now let's actually run it and control our robot. So put your Pi to Go on the floor and then we're going to run the program with the command sudo python motor.py and then hit enter. Immediately, your robot will spring to life like this. Use the arrow keys to control it and speed up and down with the greater than and less than keys. Congratulations, you're wirelessly controlling your robot from another computer. When you get tired of that, you can kill the program by holding Control C on your keyboard. That will stop the script completely. And so concludes the first episode of my Raspberry Pi robot series. In this episode, you've learned how to make a robot move wirelessly. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to make your Pi to Go avoid obstacles using the ultrasonic and infrared distance sensors. To stay tuned, make sure that you subscribe, like, and share. And until next time, bye.